terrifying experience. <laughs> Just look at that. Like, this place looks like somewhere else, like a different world. Almost like they managed to stop time. Our motorbike trip starts here, in Hajan, where we got our bike sorted for the next four days. But before I tell you where we're headed and introduce you to our family and friends, why don't we just get going? Alright, so we're gonna head out of Hajan. Beautiful mountains in the distance. It's a little bit cloudy, overcast, but so far it looks good. Vietnam, baby! Woo! Yeah! It's a little bit windy, but oh yeah, look at that beautiful green mountains. This is gonna be epic. Woo! Today, we are heading to a small town called Yen Min. Along the way, we will be checking out the road less traveled and of course, be stopping to check out all the incredible viewpoints. It's a beautiful day. Clouds are leaving us. Overcast weather is almost done. How do you feel? I feel great. Um, <laughs> we're out here right in that Hazang loop, baby. First person joining us on this adventure is my older sister Kelly and her boyfriend Ash, visiting us all the way from Portland, Oregon. Filled up and ready to hit the dusty trail. Feels like we're finally getting out of the city. The city is absolutely crazy to drive through and was a little bit stressful. This is her first time driving a semi-automatic scooter and she's doing really well. Definitely getting some use to for this semi-automatic bike. But we're getting out of the city and into the mountains and trees all around and oh, stunning. bridge with some traffic oh yeah let's go look at this cool little bridge over the river oh wow look at the mountains it's so green this place is so beautiful and that's only the start like it gets more and more beautiful as you go so I'm excited for that We're almost out of the city. As you can see, it is lush, green, and the mountains are beautiful. They look similar to the mountains in Thailand. Um, the car, is, I think it's limestone. It's just porous and you, can, you have a lot of caves and it being porous, because calcium carbonate, they melt easily or dissolve easily with acid, like acid rain. So then you have a lot of pockets where, you know, trees can grow and you have lush, forest on top of a mountain like that. So beautiful. Some parts of the road are under construction, as you can see. And yeah, cause a little bit of traffic. Just take it easy around the corners. So Gustav and I did this loop last year in December and it was freaking cold. Like it was so bone chilling cold. And now it's sunny, it's warm. It's incredible. And here's our group. Woo! Plan. Coffee? I mean, is there a place? Yeah, we, uh, we'll go to the place? Second person joining us is Min, who drove my little sister Chloe and ended up being a huge help to all of us. Min brought along Kwan, who drove our friend Kara. Okay. Perfect. So pretty. Yes. This like, is like the low elevation. Course. I know. Yeah. Kelly and Ash. Uh, got tricky. Woo! How are you doing? Beautiful. Bye bye bye. Loads of kids all over. Hello. Hello. 
And something that's so special here too is that there's so many kids running around and they all wave at you and they all want to say hello and they all want to take photos with you and they it just it's so welcoming and we really really love that part of it here. Woo! This is literally a dream come true. A dream come true. I'm not kidding you. Last night I had a dream <laughs> about this moment. Like not kidding you. Honestly, it feels fake right now. Look at that view. Wow. I'm gonna have to launch the drone again. Look at that. terrifying experience <laughs> we messed up <laughs> so we just got stopped by the police they're checking everyone's driver's licenses but we didn't have the international driver's license or a license like a certificate from Vietnam so we had to pay a fine of 1.5 million dong about $60 I think and they let us go they're like well you don't have any transport if we keep the bikes, so you have to go and they send your information to the next checkpoints so that you don't get fined again at the next checkpoint. That's quite nice. They're like, okay, just drive safe, drive slow, tell us what the speed limit is. Because there's not a lot of road signs actually saying how slow or how fast you can go. So yeah, if you do the Ajang loop, just make sure you have some cash on you. Pay the fine and we're moving on. So here we go. The rest of the trip should be pretty stress-free. Wow. Can I get coffee with milk? Hi, Coco. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, there's my younger sister, Chloe, and her friend, Kara, all the way from Seattle, Washington. Beep, 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 beep. So as you can see, we are out of the mountains and into the valleys. And these valleys are absolutely amazing. The geology is nuts. The amount of greenery is spectacular. And of course, the roads are beautiful. Just look at that, it's like, oh, can't believe like, a place like this even exists. Hopefully we'll get a place to get a good lunch in the near future. I'm getting hungry. I need some protein. So right now we are overlooking Fairy Bosom Mountain Viewpoint. Because <laughs> I think they call these the bosom of a fairy. Yeah. So fairy bosom, <laughs> that's what this area is called. I guess because this place is very like majestic, we could find fairies here just like flying around. I could see that. Right, so we're driving into the next town. We are out of the mountains. Last time we came here, there was way more flags, like Vietnamese flags. But as you can see, some remnants of the French uh, architecture, I would say, from way back. When I'm away, I will remember how you kissed me. How am I doing, Ed Sheeran? If you're watching, let me know. All right, so we are coming into the town of Kuan Ba. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. So we just passed another police checkpoint. And lo and behold, they actually called the other police. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, they already paid the fine, let them go. And here we are on our way. And of course, it's picturesque. There's horses, there's water buffaloes, cornfields, rice fields, valleys. Just look at that. Like, this place looks like somewhere else, like a different world. Like, almost like they managed to stop time you know like it's it's in the past people are still working the fields of rice rice patties with the hats minimal equipment just a little bit of petrol powered machines but that's about it like they still use buffaloes in the fields so cool it's amazing so we're off the main road and hello and uh just hitting through this little i don't know little community so let's see where this goes. Those are chickens. So interesting to see all these people live. Like, such an interesting place. Oh. oh, I guess we just skipped part of the main road. I don't know why. All right, back on the main road. And it just keeps on being beautiful. It's like, just how? How is this place so picturesque? I wonder if the locals realize what a beautiful place this is already. Are they they just used to it? Oh look at this gang of Pikachu's. Or this Raichu. Look at that. Like just wow. Around every corner is wow. And some more wow and triple wow on top of the wow and just wait for it and then around every corner bam beautiful it's like wow so just when you think wow it's beautiful you like come across the next wow and it's look at that it's like i don't know just don't know how a place could be this beautiful so one of my colleagues came to this part of vietnam 15 years ago and he said you had to get a military escort, like police escort, because it was a military zone, the northern parts of Vietnam at least. Um, you can't just go and drive by yourself like we are at the moment. He said, but after a while they just, I think they rented bikes, they just gassed the bikes and like left the police in the dust and like went on their own. I guess it must be because it's so close to the Chinese border. Yeah, interesting. 15 years ago, what, times have changed for the good and there's loads of little waterfalls they just all stream down from the mountain I guess it's like just past rainy season and I'm sure all the uh, plant material just soaks up the water and it's like acts like a sponge and just leaks down all the way to the valleys and beautiful into the beautiful rivers oh what a sense of freedom Next village, Hmong village. So there's loads of different ethnic groups you can find in the north of Vietnam and all of them have like different clothes. We'll be passing some of them in a while. Really beautiful and colorful traditional garb and loads of little kids walking. And it's really cute, cute to see like, there's such happy people, these mountain hill tribe people. And you can imagine it's a hard life, but they walk in these mountain passes every day up the mountain with food and grass for the bites, buffaloes and... Oh, you can see uh, this guy's got some, some bees he's keeping. Loads of bees. Now look at all the canal just feeding all, all the farms. Water just running down. And as you can see on the left, they've got some corn drying out in the sun. Yellow corn. So they actually grow a lot of corn here, not just rice. And they use the corn to make some alcohol fermented in the spillet. And they call it happy water. So we're gonna have some happy water tonight. Hopefully it makes us happy. We have a traffic jam. 
How cute. This weather is just perfect for the first day on the loop. Day one, Hajiang to Yen Min. And our homestay tonight is Tom Homestay. Hey, can you believe it? People actually cycled the Hajiang loop. Hey, good job. Hey, good job! Yeah, you, you gotta be tough to cycle this, like, wow. Mountain passes, massive eleva elevation gain. I would do it one day. Everyone's just so happy, because you're just in the most beautiful place in the world. So we're climbing high up into the mountains again. Massive elevation gain. But it is so worth it because just look at that beauty! I know if you're watching this you cannot smell through the camera. But if you could smell what this area smells like, it's fresh. And when you drive by someone's house, you can smell a fire burning. And it just has this, such a distinct smell. It adds to like that feeling of being here, is that smell and smells are so powerful and you know, like taste, it's so powerful for our memory and it just brings back emotions and feelings and stuff. And th this smell and the taste of the food and the, obviously the sights, the views really makes you feel this area and that's what I love so much about being on a motorbike. You can smell all the smells, you can hear all the noises, you can hear the kids walk by and say hello 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 and you know you can hear the people just speaking and you can hear everything like it's just that's why riding on a motorbike is so special because you're exposed to everything. You feel like you're in it. awesome being able to be on a motorbike and experience it with your own eyes and experience all the elements firsthand is indescribable you just have to do it you just got to do it man i think we're gonna stop here and look at this viewpoint <laughs> First day of the Hazong Loop. So far, so good. You know, it's been a little hairy at times. I'm getting a feel for the bike. Yeah, it's been a great adventure so far. Excited to see the next few days. Let's go. Wait, wait, what is, wait, what is <laughs> Coming to you live from the Hazong Loop. This is Chloe, back to you in the studio. Min, go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> She got moves. She got moves. <laughs> but look at this, like yeah. the most epic landscape. Okay, it's got all her protective gear on. So it looks quite nice and comfy. I'm enjoying the cold so much at the moment that I don't want to put the jacket on. Because it's just like I haven't felt like chilly in so long. It's actually a nice feeling. Especially after Hanoi's heat yesterday, it's hot. Here you can see the hill tribe people with their backpacks full of grass. I think the grass is to feed their their water buffaloes, but I'm not sure. You always see them walk in the mountains and even up steep mountains. Big backpack, like massive, stacked with the grass. Never see where they're going. But these people are so tough and hardy and hardworking. Hug that corner, hug that corner. Ooh! Wow, look at this.
I definitely think that the way that we're doing this is the best way for our group because obviously some of us want to ride on our own and then some people wanted to drive with someone but we didn't hire like a big company in Hajiang. Chloe just found them through Facebook. I don't know, I guess maybe we just got lucky but we got a really awesome tour guide. Doggy, you're in the middle of the road. Hello. We're gonna stop up there. So we're almost to Yenmin. And we stop here to get to this, what is it called? A tower. A tower. Wow. Yeah. I like it doesn't incredible. Look real. Like I my eyes just So we are staying at Tom Homestay for our first night. What you got there? Some pear apple thing. Good. Tastes like a pear. Thick skin though. We're really doing this right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 